So as I mentioned, the other type of method is an explicit runger cutter method. Um, so explicit runger cutter methods, these are given the uh, the shorthand ERK for explicit runger cutter methods. Um, and what we do here is we assume that if we let C1 be always equal to zero, and that's not an and, oops, C1 equals zero, and also a i j is less than or equal. Uh, sorry, three, two, one. So now I'm going to talk about explicit runga cutter methods, which is the other type of runga cutter method. Um, so these are more uh, a lot more common because they're a lot more straightforward to actually calculate. So explicit runga cutter methods are given the uh, shorthand ERK for short. Okay, so what we're going to do with these is we're going to say if we let C1 equals zero, um, so we're always going to have C1 equals zero. That's a, that's some uh, constraint we're placing on our method. I'm also going to say that AIJ is going to be equal to zero where i is less than or equal to j. Okay, so if we uh, if we write down the the, the run cutter method, so the updating the updating uh, expression for y is actually the same as the implicit method. Okay, so let's say we've got a uh, let's say we've got a two oh, I got that wrong. Let's say we have a two stage method. So similar to before, so B1 K1 plus B1, uh, B2 K2. So that's exactly the same as the one for the IRK method. But this time with K1, okay, so ordinarily we had F of Tn plus C1 H. Well, C1 in this case is zero. So we just got F of Tn. Um, the second um, the second argument, well, that was um, yn plus h times our a11 and a a12. Well, a11 and a12 will be both be zero because in this case i is one and j is one or two. So that means we just got yn. So our first stage uh, stage value is f of tn yn. Our second stage value, okay, that's the same as before or similar to as before, so Tn plus C2H and we'll have Yn plus H and it was the sum of J equals 1 to S so we'll have A21 times K1 uh, ordinarily we'd have A22 times K2 but because I is 2 and J is 2 um, the A22 would be 0 Okay. So that's the uh, second stage value uh, for an implicit runger cutter method. Uh, sorry, explicit runger cutter method. Okay, so if we draw the butcher tableau for this, we have uh, B1 and B2 down here. Uh, C1 is zero, and we'll have some value for C2. And the only non-zero element of A is A21. So this is what the butcher tableau looks like for a two-stage runga cutter method. Okay, so for a sort of general S-stage runga cutter method, I'm just going to draw out the butcher tableau again. Okay, so we've got B1, B2, uh, I'm going to go up to uh, BS minus 1 and BS. Okay, and our C values, uh, so we'll have C, uh, C1 and 0, C2 and C3 all the way down to C, S. Okay, so our A values, so A11 was zero, and if I go down the first column of A, okay, when, when we get below the main diagonal, we have non-zero values for A, so there's A22, all the way down to A, uh, S1, sorry, that's A21 there. Okay, if I go across to the next, um, the next column, well, A12 will be 0, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, ignore that for now. Uh, A22 is also going to be 0, but A32 is non zero. So I've got a non zero on there, going all the way down to AS2. 
Okay, um, and this sort of carries on. This this behaviour carries on, and what we have is we have this sort of lower triangular. Uh, oops, just got the uh, index wrong there. So it should be A S S minus one. So we have this sort of lower triangular uh, format to our A values. So if I just draw a border around. Uh, a, you notice there's nothing up here. Okay, well these are actually zeros, but I I haven't written them for for, for simplicity. So when we're presented with a butcher tableau, if it's strictly um, lower triangular, we have an explicit runga cutter method, and if it isn't strictly lower triangular, we know we have an implicit runga cutter method.